In 1866, the United States Congress passed legislation creating four all African American Army units, the 9th and 10th Cavalry, and the 24th and 25th Infantry Regiments. These segregated troops served in the American West and would go on to play major roles in the Spanish-American War, both World Wars, and the Korean War. These are the stories of the Army's first black regulars, stories built on the legacy of the Buffalo Soldiers. A young graduate of Fairfield Industrial High School in Alabama, Oliver W. Dillard attended the famed Tuskegee Institute from 1942 to 1945 on a scholarship. In 1947, he was selected to attend Officer Candidate School. And by July 1950, then Second Lieutenant Dillard was deployed to the Republic of Korea with the 24th Infantry Regiment. I was a with the initial group that went to Korea for the 24th Regiment and of course we were trying to stop the North Koreans and I was assigned to the 3rd Battalion, participated in our first offensive action uh, at Yechon and then we withdrew to the Pusan perimeter. While assigned as an intelligence officer, Dillard, now a captain, was tasked with helping defend a crucial mountainous region of Masan. Reinforcing U.S. defenses with his battalion commander, Dillard responded to enemy action with a small group of soldiers and bravely refortified the area, but at much risk and great cost. We were, were finding it very difficult to hold on to that terrain, and of course we went the battalion commander and I and then two or three scouts and a few other people went on the hill to be with the unit that were, were just barely holding on. So we went up to assist and the night we, we were there uh, was under heavy attack. My old company, our company there and uh, two, two other companies. This particular night uh, we would have been overrun, I think, if all of us hadn't participated. After the skirmish, some white officers argued that the soldiers of the 24th were cowardly and refused to fight with other units in dire need, a claim which was ultimately disproven years later. Nonetheless, due to his courage under intense enemy opposition and valor in combat, Dillard was awarded the Silver Star in 1950. Colonel Dillard served two tours in Vietnam, first as a province senior advisor and later as the deputy assistant chief of staff for civil operations and rural development. In both roles, he worked within the rural populations of South Vietnam integrating civilian and military efforts to combat enemy insurgent forces. Looking at James Bond and safe houses and meeting at uh, shadowy places, that was the vision of intelligence for the young intelligence officers. When you get down in the, in the regiment, there are no safe houses. So you've got to know your soldiers. You've got to to do some of the basic things, look out for their welfare, treat them with honor and dignity, be part of them. After his service in Vietnam, Dillard returned to the United States and became Deputy Chief of Staff for Intelligence for U.S. Army Forces Command and later for U.S. Army Europe. After a military career of 34 years, Major General Dillard retired in 1980. Leadership is an art, we all know, of getting the people in your command to do what you want them to do. we got to be down in the foxhole, if necessary, with the guy that's trying to make a decision, not sitting back at some high headquarters. Major General Oliver Dillard was the fifth black officer in the United States to attain a flag rank in the Army. His shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder courage and enthusiasm for problem-solving helped form a foundation of an expanding military intelligence program. Major General Dillard will be remembered for his bravery in battle, his leadership, 
and his devotion to his country.